Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, in this video, we are going to be looking at how to actually use the unit circle. Because even if you were following through, if you watched both of the other two videos um, that I put out for this week, um, where we went through and just kind of developed, talked about what the unit circle was, and then developed the different angles, um, and then, you know, moved that all the way around the circle, the, sure, you could keep up and you can follow along and kind of write down what I'm doing, but it, using it is really the most important part. So that's why I wanted to make a separate video on actually utilizing the unit circle because now that you have completed it, because this is supposed to be being watched on Tuesday is what this video is intended for. If you watch it beforehand, good for you but it should be the third video in the sequence that you're watching because by now you have completed your unit circle. And this is a nice, clean, polished version of what that should look like. In your packet that you received from me last Thursday, um, you have a copy of this in there somewhere. I think I even attached it to the backside of the blank one that I had given you because I want to make sure regardless of kind of every all the other barriers that we have, we want to make sure you have an accurate version of this. So what this video is, is just going to be showing you how we actually use it. So before we can actually do that, I'm, I am going to go through one of each of the three, sorry, sorry, each of the six different trig functions for six different angles, both in degrees and in radians, to give you a little mix of all the different things. We have to talk a little bit about just kind of the trig functions in general. So uh, on the videos, yes, well, what's supposed to be yesterday, parts one and two, we talked about how in my unit circle, what ended up happening was the coordinates of these points ended up being my cosine and my sine values. So what we know here is that all of these coordinates that I know, all the all the x and y values are based on, are, are going to provide me my sine and my cosine values. And the x value was my cosine, the y value was my sine. And we'll get back to that in just a second. But what we're going to need to do then, if all of my, all of my unit circle gives me is cosine and sine, we have to be able to figure out a way that we can find the other four trig values, my tangent, my cosecant, my secant, and my cotangent, just based on those two variables, just based on those two values. So first things first, the easy ones are my cosecant and my secant. Because if I know what my, my sine value is, cosecant is just the reciprocal of that value, and then secant is just the reciprocal of my cosine. The tricky part is tangent and my cotangent then by extension. So what we know in our original three trig values, Sokotoa, sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine's ratio is the opposite over the hypotenuse, cosine's ratio was the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and then my tangent was my opposite over my adjacent. So something we haven't really had to do before is use sine and cosine to get my tangent. So what I end up doing, or the, what, what I have to do here, if I look at tangent, I'm trying to get opposite over my adjacent. Now, if all I know is my sine and my cosine values, let's just try saying, well, sine had had the opposite in it, so let's put that up top. Cosine had the adjacent in it, so let's put that in the bottom. And that ends up being a ratio. Now, the reason that works, if you replace these, tangent is opposite over adjacent, my sine is opposite over hypotenuse. My cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So in the right side of that equation, I have hypotenuse on both top and bottom, right? They're both fractions with hypotenuse in the denominator. So this right side ends up reducing to the opposite over the adjacent. So that means that tangent is equivalent to sine over cosine. So if I wanted to go back and rewrite then what my cotangent is, because I want everything to be in terms of sine and cosines, because that's what the unit circle gives me, I'm going to go ahead and replace cotangent, since it's the reciprocal of tangent, 
to be cosine over sine. So that's all six of my trig values in terms of sine or cosine. Now I'm going to actually simplify that down even further because we know in my unit circle the x value was the cosine of that angle, the y value was the sine of that angle. So I'm going to even put it into terms here, and this is going to be a good thing to make sure you copy down, or even if you want to add it to your unit circle on the back side of that page, or even in the margins, because we knew sine was the y value for the terminal point, cosine was the x value for the terminal point. So of that terminal point, the, the point on my unit circle, the x value is my cosine, the y value is my sine. And what we're going to do for the other four trig values, we're going to put it all in terms of those coordinates on my unit circle. So if tangent was sine over cosine, that means I'm going to take the y value of that point and divide it by the x value of that point. For cosine, secant, and cotangent, it's just going to be the reciprocals of all three of those that I have here. So sine is y, so cosecant there's going to be 1 over y. Secant, since that's the reciprocal of cosine, is going to be 1 over x. And then my cotangent, since that's going to be the reciprocal of tangent, is going to be x over y. So those six things right there are going to be really, really important for you to have somewhere. So again, if you want to add it to your unit circle up above, you want to put it you know, down here in the, the margins down here by where you can see the website that I stole this particular unit circle from, or if you want to add it in the top above where it says unit circle, that's fine. But again, those are how we're going to actually figure out the trig values. We're going to evaluate those trig functions based on the unit circle. So now again, x is the coordinate for that terminal point, and y can be the, uh, the y value of my terminal point. So the way this will work, and actually if you're paying attention, some of these are directly from the maze that you guys are working on today. Some of these are really easy, some are a little bit more complicated, but it really is just kind of finding where these angles are in the unit circle, and then stealing the right coordinates. So for this first one, we're going to do the sine of 35 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and pop up to the unit circle. 35 degrees is right here. It's coordinate is negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, the square root of 2 over 2. Now since we're looking for sine, sine is just the y value. So literally all we have to do is just steal this y value. That is the sine of 135 degrees. So without having to do anything else, all the way back down, the sine of 135 is just the square root of 2 over 2. And you're done. Nothing else to think about, nothing else to calculate. That's it. For the next one, for cosine of 3 pi over 4, cosine of 3 pi over 4, now this one is in radians, so now I'm looking for the same angle in radians, which actually ends up being the same angle we just used, 135 and 3 pi over 4 are the same ang exact angle. So since I'm looking for the cosine of that angle, now I'm just using the x value. Now it's negative square root of 2 over 2. So when I go back down to cosine of 3 pi over 4, that's just negative square root of 2 over 2. Boom. Done. Nothing else to it. But that should be the case. Sine and cosine are just the x and the y values. There's nothing we have to manipulate at all. We're just stealing directly from either the x or the y value for that coordinate point. Those are the easy ones. For tangent, so tangent of 120, we're going to be, again, starting with the coordinates for 120. But remember, tangent is going to be the y value over the x value. Because again, that's going to be my sine over, or sorry, my, yeah, my sine over cosine. So I'm going to go ahead to 120. And this will be easier for you to be able to flip back and forth. 
So for 120, the x value is negative 1 over 2. That's the, that's the x value. My y value is square root of 3 over 2. So when I go to my ratio for 120, the y value was square root of 3 over 2. The x value was negative 1 over 2. So now what I have to do is reduce my, simplify my fraction. Now in this case, my denominators are the same on both top and bottom. So similar to what we did for sine over cosine, those are going to cancel out. That leaves me with square root of 3 over negative 1, which we don't traditionally use negative 1 as a denominator. The way that I would simplify that is just negative square root of 3. And that would be the tangent of 120. You could also, if that makes if it, it makes it a little bit easier for you, I'm going to kind of go off on a tangent over here in green. Heh, <laughs> I'm going off on a tangent. Uh, anyway, square root of 3 over 2. Since I'm dividing by negative 1 half, I could also change that to a multiplication by the reciprocal, by 2 over negative 1. And then you'll again see that those 2's cancel out top and bottom. Divide by negative 1 is just a negative out in front. Is another way of still getting square to, or negative square root of 3. So that's a tangent. For cosecant, cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine, so that means this ratio is going to be 1 over my y value. Let's change colors here. Let's do red again. So 1 over my y value. So I'm going to find 4 pi over 3 which on my unit circle, 4 pi over 3 is right down there, 240. Since we're looking for the cosecant, which is 1 over the y value, my y value is negative 3 over 2, or sorry, negative square root of 3 over 2. So now, this is going to be 1 over negative square root of 3 over 2, which for those ones, it might be easier, no, it's definitely easier, instead of thinking of it as this way, to just jumping right into the reciprocal of your y value. That's what 1 over y is. This is the same thing as reciprocal of y. So rather than saying 1 over negative square root of 3 over 2, it's the same thing as just saying 2 over negative square root of 3. I'm just going to flip that y value over right away. Now with this, it's a little more complicated because we have a square root in my denominator that I cannot leave there. So I have to rationalize by multiplying by that square root. So here I end up with 2 root 3 over 3. Don't forget that negative sign. So negative 2 root 3 over 3 is what I end up with. And again, that's just rationalizing. Don't get freaked out by it. If you end up with a radical in the denominator, which will happen every once in a while, if you have to reciprocate something that has a square root of 2 or a square root of 3 in it, that's just what we have to deal with. So negative 2 root 3 over 3 would be the cosecant of 4 pi over 3. Okay, two more. Two more examples here for you. Secant of 135. So again, secant is the reciprocal of my cosine. Cosine is x. So it's either going to be 1 over x, or again, thinking of it easier, easier as the reciprocal of x, or the reciprocal of cosine. So I'm going to go ahead and find 135 on my unit circle. 135. Hey, I already used that one. Let's just go back to it. 135. Now, if I'm doing the reciprocal of x, that is that, that same one I just erased, negative square root of 2 over 2. That's the x value. So if I do the reciprocal of that, that would be 2 over negative square root of 2. 2 over the negative square root of 2. 
So this is another one where we do still have to rationalize. So I'm going to have to multiply by the square root of 2 on both top and bottom. That ends up with my negative sign still being there. 2 square root of 2 over 2. Whoa, we got 2's on top and bottom. we got to reduce those bad boys. Negative square root of 2 is that final simplification. Sorry if I'm going too quick on that one. Again, I'm just reciprocating my x, so just flipping it over, rationalizing, and then simplifying. Negative square root of 2. For the last one, cotangent of... 5 pi over 3. Once more, we're going to go back up here. We're going to find 5 pi over 3 on our unit circle, which is right here. 5 pi over 3 has x value of 1 half, positive 1 half, and a y value of negative square root of 3 over 2. So since we're doing cotangent, cotangent is x over y of that terminal point. The x value for 5 pi over 3 was 1 half. The y value was negative square root of 3 over 2. So now, depending on again how you want to, how, how you view simplifying your two rad your two um, fractions together. They both are denominators of 2, so they're going to reduce. Or again, you could flip and multiply. Either way, we end up with 1 over negative square root of 3. So we do still have to rationalize one more time. Multiply by the square root of 3 on top and bottom. I end up with square root of 3 over 3. And then just make sure that negative sign right here, doesn't get lost along the way, and that would be your answer. Cotan of 5 pi over 3 is negative square root of 3 over 3. So that's one of each, one of each, sine, cosine, tan, cosecant, secant, and cotan. I did a nice mix of degrees and radians, and all of that again is based on that little piece right there. Sine is y, cosine is x, tangent is y over x, cosecant is 1 over y, or the reciprocal of y, secant is 1 over x, or the reciprocal of x, and then cotangent is x over y. So that's using your unit circle. What you're going to be doing really today, tomorrow, and Thursday is just going through and just utilizing those skills. So going through and just evaluating. Usually the instructions will say evaluate without a calculator which is why we have these exact answers in terms of square roots and fractions and all that good stuff. Because you could use a calculator just to get the decimal approximation for it, but this is utilizing without a calculator. So that's where that unit circle comes into play. If you are confused, if you are struggling with this, I totally understand this is one of, if not the most difficult lessons in Algebra 2, it's what people usually struggle with the most. That's why they call this the circle of death, as the, the, the next name a lot of past students have, have come and kind of given this, because it really is. It's the most difficult stuff that we do. It's the most complicated, and that's really unfortunate because you're doing it either on your own or just utilizing these. So if you are struggling, reach out and let me know. Again, we can schedule a Google Meet. We can schedule something where we can sit down and chat. If a phone call is easier because your internet's not great, I do have a way of doing that as well where we can I can mask the number and it just looks like it's coming from the school so that we don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Um, just reach out and let me know if you need additional support. Once again, have a fantastic day. I do miss you guys. Hope to hear from you soon.